This sermon is titled Healing Belongs to Us. Be enriched as you listen. Today is Supernatural Sunday. It's a Sunday where we just share a very simple message from the Word of God and then we pray together. We want to see God work. We want to see God you know, minister healing, deliverance, miracles. And so that's what we do on Supernatural Sundays. And we intentionally do this once a month. We keep the last Sunday of the month as Supernatural Sunday. We intentionally do this because we need to be reminded that our God is a miracle-working God. Amen? We need to be reminded that God is powerful, God is mighty, that God works in our lives. Otherwise, you know, uh, we tend to, our, our faith tends to become very intellectual, very rational, very theological, and we uh, tend to exclude the supernatural working of God. And so we need, uh, as a church, to be reminded. And so that's why we intentionally do this uh, on the fourth Sunday of every month, on the last Sunday of every month. Last month, we had, um, we did Holy Spirit baptism uh, right there in, in the main service. And it was just beautiful to hear of different ones being baptized in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, just getting that journey started. And of course, there's so much more. We need to journey into greater things of, of the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to remind us about healing, and we'll just title my sermon, title the message today simply as healing belongs to us. So let's all say this together. Healing belongs to us. Say one more time. Healing belongs to us. So I want to really encourage us along those lines from Scripture, of course, so that we can be strengthened in our faith. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So as we hear the Word of God, faith in our heart will rise. Faith will be built up. And then faith is the hand that reaches out and receives from God. In the natural, physical, God's given us hands we can receive. But faith is like that in the spiritual. Faith is the hand that reaches out and receives from God. Amen? And so we want to encourage uh, us along those lines. And then, of course, we're going to pray. Uh, pray for one another. Pray here this morning. We can pray for people we know who may not be here. And expect God to heal. Expect God to touch them and minister to them. So as the word of God is being released to you, let faith arise in your heart. Let expectation arise. If you are in need of some physical healing in your body or in your mind, you are in need of God to touch you. Expect that to happen. I mean, as the word of God is being released to you, because God watches over his word to perform it. Amen? God watches over his word. So while the word is being spoken, the God of heaven is watching over that word and saying, I'm ready to perform it in our lives. So why is it that we could say, we could affirm that healing belongs to us and uh, all of us need to be in that place where there is no iota of doubt, no shadow, not even a single question that healing is for you. That God Almighty has made healing his provision for you. On what basis can we say that? I want to just share quickly five reasons on why we do that. The countdown begins now. Number one, <laughs> the reason we can say that healing belongs to us is because of God, who's the father of all mercies. God is the God of all mercies. God is a merciful, loving, kind, compassionate God. And we see in the Bible, and we'll see, you know, uh, we will be referencing several scriptures here this morning. Um, I'll just be going through it very quickly. Uh, so if you don't write it down, don't worry. The sermon notes are up there already on the church website. And uh, you can take that. You can watch the recording or listen to the audio again. So don't worry if you cannot write everything down since I might be going a little fast. The Bible tells us that healing and deliverance is a work of God's mercy. It's a work of God's compassion. It's a work of God's goodness. Now listen, Psalm 145, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious. He's full, overflowing. He's full of compassion. And His tender mercy is slow to anger, great mercy. The Lord 
His tender mercies, verse 9, please. Yeah. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. The Lord is good to all. You are included in that little word, all. Amen? Just a small word, all, but you are included. The Lord is good to all. And His tender mercies are over all His works. So you are included in that. The goodness of God is on your life. The tender mercies of God are on your life. For everyone sitting here, and even if somebody, some stranger walks off the road, you and I don't have to question, is God good to this person? You don't have to question about God's tender mercies because the Bible already says, the Lord is good to all. And His tender mercies are over all His works. So the goodness of God, the tender mercies of God are over everyone as available to you and me. When we look into the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see that the healings, the deliverances that Jesus did were an expression of the goodness, the mercies, and the compassion of the Lord. And I'll run through several examples. In Mark chapter 1, when Jesus was uh, ministering, or Matthew 14, 14, it says, when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed them. He was moved with compassion, and he healed. His compassion led him to heal the people physically, set them free from their illnesses and their ailments. And the Bible says he healed all those who were sick. When the leper came to Jesus, in Mark 1, the Bible says that Jesus touched him. Jesus was moved with compassion and touched him. So the healing of the leper was a work of compassion. He did it because he was compassionate. He reached out in compassion towards the leper. In uh, uh, talking about two blind men in Matthew 20, they cried out, these two blind men, they cried out for mercy. They said, son of David, have mercy on me or have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped. He touched and he healed. So his healing, healing them of their blindness was an expression of his mercy. They cried out for his mercy. So healing, it's a work of his mercy. The demon-possessed man in Mark 5. This man was demon-possessed, left in the wilderness. Uh, he was tearing himself up in the tombs. But when Jesus came, he delivered him. And then this man, he wanted to go along with Jesus. But Jesus said, you know, I want you to go back to your home. Tell the people the compassion that God has, had, God has had on you. So his deliverance was a work of God's compassion on him. In Luke 7, we read about the time when Jesus was walking in the city of Nain. And there was this widow. And she had lost her only son. He died. And here was this funeral procession taking him. Out of the city, Jesus stopped. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. He raised that young man up. That was a work of his compassion. So you see the healings, the deliverances, the miracles Jesus did were works of his compassion. In the Psalms, Psalm 6 verse 2, the psalmist cried out. He said, have mercy on me, O Lord, and heal me. Let's say it together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, and heal me. So healing as a work of God's mercy. Amen? So, you and I must understand that healing is a work of God's mercy and you and I can ask God for his mercy anytime because the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. His mercy is on your life. His goodness is on your life. In Psalm 107, verses 20 and 22, that Psalm 107 talks about people in various situations who call out to the mercy of God. In verse 20, it's talking about people who are ill. He says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions so that men could praise him and thank him for his goodness. So that healing was a work of God's goodness. Amen? So healing belongs to you. Because your heavenly father is a father of goodness. He's a father of mercies. He's a father of compassion. It belongs to you. 
Second reason why we can say that healing belongs to us as a children of God is because of God's covenant of healing. See, God's covenant is God's solemn oath. It's a solemn promise to you. He says, this is who I will be to you. And in his covenant, he said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, your physician. Now in the Old Testament, Exodus 15, 26, he said, I am Jehovah Rapha. This is my covenant. I am the Lord, your physician. I'm the Lord, your healer. Moses reaffirming this in Exodus 23, 25 and 26, he said, you will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And he says, I will take sickness away from your midst. I will take sickness away from your midst. No one will suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. And the number of your days I will fulfill. Meaning I will help you live out the full length of your life. Amen. This is his covenant, his promise. He says, as a covenant keeping, promise keeping God. He says, I am your physician. And this is what I will do. I will bless the food you eat. I will take sickness away from your midst. No one will be barren. No one will suffer miscarriage. And I will make sure you live out the full length of your life. That's part of his covenant to you and me. Amen. He promised. Deuteronomy 7 verse 15 says, I will take sickness away from your midst. He didn't say, if you are my children and you obey me, I will bring sickness to you. Didn't say that anywhere. Said, you walk, you're my children, I will take sickness away from your midst. Amen? God's covenant. God's covenant. He promised that. Now it is interesting that as people under the covenant, they understood that healing was theirs. We know this Psalm, Psalm 103, verse two and three. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So he's talking to God's people. He's saying, God's people, we are his people. We are his covenant people. Don't forget what are your blessings, what are your benefits as being under his covenant? Don't forget his benefits. Verse 3, he forgives all our sins and he heals all our diseases. That's your blessing as being a covenant person under the covenant of God. Don't forget his benefits. Now look at Jesus. When Jesus in his earthly ministry, as he was ministering primarily to the Jewish people, he was ministering to people under the old covenant. He had not yet set up the new covenant. He had not yet died. And, you know, he had not yet resurrected there. So he was ministering under the old covenant. He was ministering to people under the old covenant. And I just want to bring your attention to two things. One. Jesus in Matthew 15, he referred to healing and deliverance as the children's bread. He referred to healing and deliverance as the children's bread. Now think about this. You know, parents, when they get their, you know, breakfast, lunch, or dinner table ready, they put food there. Maybe there's a loaf of bread there, slices of bread there. Children come around the table. And this has never happened. No child would say, Daddy, if it be thy will, give me half a slice of the bread. Come on. But that's how Christians pray. Oh, Father, if it be thy will, heal me. And you can imagine God on the other side saying, healing is the children's bread. Take as many slices as you want. It's for you. Are you getting it? So actually, it's meaningless to pray like that 
Because healing is already the children's bread. Meaning the heavenly father has put it on the table saying, there's enough bread for all my children. Any number of slices you need is there. Take it. Meaning you and I need to be convinced. Our father in heaven has made healing and deliverance as his provision for us. Healing is a children's bread. On another occasion, this is in the 13th chapter of Luke, there is this woman who's been bent over. And Jesus sees her. He says, this woman has been bent over for 18 years. And then he reminds, he invokes the covenant. She is a daughter of Abraham, meaning she is a person under covenant. She's a daughter of Abraham. Satan has bound her, but she needs to be loosed. Because her covenant means she does not, should not be bound. Are you listening? He says she's a daughter of Abraham. She's a woman under covenant. And so she should be free. And he ministered to her on the basis of her covenant with God through Abraham. Covenant. So second reason why you and I affirm that healing belongs to us. Because God is a God of covenant. Now you and I as New Testament believers, we are under a new covenant with God. And the Bible says the new covenant is a better covenant. And it has better promises. It's a better covenant. It has better promises. So how much more can you and I say healing is for us? It belongs to us. We are in covenant with God. God our Father is Jehovah Rapha. And he's made a provision for us. The third reason you and I can affirm that healing belongs to us is because of the cross of Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus took our sicknesses and diseases. Now we all know that on the cross he bore our sins so that we could be forgiven. We know that. But there's so much more that Jesus did on the cross. And the Bible makes it so clear that on the cross he took of our sicknesses, he took our diseases. Isaiah 53, verses four and five, Isaiah the prophet, 700 years before Christ, he wrote, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. If you look up the Hebrew, the word grief means sickness, sorrows means pain. Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pain. Surely. But we did esteem him smitten, stricken of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. That means the punishment that brought us peace. That word peace is shalom. It means total wholeness. Wholeness of mind and body. Total well-being. The punishment that brings us peace. That brings us shalom was upon him. That means the punishment he bore puts peace into our lives. And by his stripes, we are healed. So Isaiah is pointing to the cross. And he says, this is what Jesus would do on the cross. The wounds he bore bring healing to us. Now, some people argue, they say, is healing really in the atonement? Well, just look at the New Testament. In Matthew, the 8th chapter, as, verses 16 and 17, as Jesus was ministering to the people, the gospel writer Matthew, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit says, you know, in the evening, they brought to Jesus all who were sick and demon possessed and Jesus healed them. He cast the spirits out with a word, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. And then he writes, Isaiah 53, 4 in Matthew 8, 17, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. So was Isaiah referring to physical healing? Yeah. Matthew 8 says that was physical healing. It was deliverance. So what Isaiah spoke about was physical healing. And you and I understand that before Jesus died on the cross, he forgave the sins of people and he healed people as a down payment, an advance payment because he was going to go and pay for it. So he could say in advance, 
you're healed. In advance, you're forgiven because I'm going to pay for it anyway. Are you listening? So healing is there on the cross. And when we come to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Peter looks back at the cross and he says, by whose stripes you were healed. It's done. Amen? So why can we say healing belongs to us? Because of the cross of Jesus. Because of what Jesus did. So let's say this together. By his stripes, I've been healed. Every cell in my body has been healed by the wounds he bore. Amen. What he did on the cross has provided healing for our body. By his stripes, we were healed. The third reason. We can, was it the third? The fourth. The fourth reason. Why we can say healing belongs to us. Is because this is our redemption blessing. Our redemption blessing. To redeem means to bring out of slavery by paying a ransom and to restore to original state, or in our case, he takes us higher. That means we are under something, we are unable to come out of it through ourselves, but somebody comes, pays a ransom, brings us out, and then he puts us back in our original state or in a better state. We have been redeemed. Now, the Bible tells us that the law made, no, made sin known to us. We knew sin because of the law. And the law also made it aware, made, made us aware that we cannot keep it. And the law also let us know that death was working in us because of sin. And Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3 in verse 10. He says, if we are trying to uh, keep, the work, keep the law by the works of the law, then none of us are able to keep the law. And so what happens? The curse of the law is upon us. So literally, because we couldn't keep the law, the curses of the law are upon all of us. So in the Old Testament, God said, all these curses will come on you if you break the law. And there's a long list of curses, and I'll highlight a few of them. So Paul says in Galatians 3.10, you know, essentially, we can't keep the law, but the, so therefore the curses are on us. But there's good news. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means the law and all the curses because we failed to keep the law. We were the lawbreakers. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law because he became a curse for us. That means he took upon himself all the curses that should have come upon us because we were the lawbreakers. He took it on himself. Somebody has already borne your curse. Somebody has already borne all the curses. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. He became a curse for us, verse 14, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. The curse been removed. Now, it's worth our while to go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, 28, and you look from verses 15 to 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, and you find all the curses of the law listed. Meaning God says, this is what will come upon you if you break even one of the commandments. The fact is we've broken all of them. Because none of us could keep it. So all these curses were upon us, but Christ redeemed us from it. I want to just highlight for us from the Good News Bible what's listed under the curses of the law. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. Look at the list, and I'm just highlighting a few. You can read it. Verse 20, disaster, confusion, and trouble. Verse 21, disease after disease. Verse 22, 
infectious diseases with swelling and fear. Verse 27, boils, sores, scabs, itch. Verse 28, losing your mind, blindness and confusion. Verse 34, losing your mind. Verse 35, painful sores and boils head to foot. Verse 59, incurable diseases and horrible epidemics. Verse 60, dreadful diseases from which you cannot re recover. Verse 61, all kinds of diseases and epidemics that are not mentioned in this book, meaning anything and everything. Verse 64, no peace anywhere. Anxiety, hopelessness, despair. Verse 66, filled with terror, living in constant fear of death. Verse 67, hearts pounding with fear. All these things are under the curses. And the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from all of this. Are you happy? Do you believe it? Christ redeemed us from all the curse of the law. Fear, anxiety, confusion, disease after disease, whatever it is, whether it's mentioned there or not, you're redeemed from it. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And you and I as believers, we need to be convinced in our hearts. This is what the Bible says. It's my redemption blessing to be free from every disease, every sickness. It's under the curse. Now you can read it very carefully. You look at the blessings, verses 1 to 14. You don't find sickness and disease mentioned under the blessings. You find sickness and disease mentioned under the curse. So don't even say, God blessed me with this sickness. God didn't bless you. Sickness is not a blessing, it's a curse. And it's, you're redeemed from it. Are you listening? Christ has redeemed us from every curse of the law. So now, what has happened? Your body is God's purchased possession. It belongs to God. Your body is God's purchased possession. Amen? And so the Paul, Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians 6, he writes like this. He's talking about sin in the light of the fact that our bodies are God's purchased possession. So he says, you know, verse 13, the latter part of verse 13, the body is not for sexual immorality. It's not for sin, but it's for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. The body is not for sin, but it's for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. Well, you can put, you can replace sin with sickness. The body is not for sickness, but it's for the Lord, and the Lord is for my body. Got it? Let's say it together. First, we'll talk about sin, then we'll talk about sickness. Let's say this together. The body is not for sin, but it's for the Lord. And the Lord is for my body. I say the same thing about sickness. My body is not for sickness, but it's for the Lord. And the Lord, who's my healer, is for my body. Amen? Your body is for the Lord, and the Lord is for your body. Your body belongs to God and he is Jehovah Rapha. He belongs, he is for your body. He's interested in your body. He purchased it at a great price. And he is Jehovah Rapha to your body. Lastly, well, let me just mention some of the things here. So the apostle Paul talks about the life of Jesus being made manifest in our body. He mentions this in 2 Corinthians 4, 10, and 11. He says, the life of Jesus is made manifest in my body. So we go through stuff in life. We are persecuted. We are beaten. Our body takes a beating. We face sickness. We face disease because it's in this world. Some of us face accidents. Some of us face all kinds of things. So our body takes a beating. But in all of that, the life of Jesus is made manifest in our body. Amen? Amen. So say, the life of Jesus is made manifest in my body. Romans 8 verse 11, the apostle Paul wrote. He said, 
that the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, he gives life to my mortal body. Our bodies are mortal. They're going to die. They're going to go to the grave sometime. But the Holy Spirit is living in you. What does he do? He gives life. So I like to say it like this, and you can say this with me. The Holy Spirit in me gives life to every cell in my body. Amen. Because Paul said, he gives life to your mortal body. Yes, body is getting old. Yes, that's part of the natural process here while we are living in this fallen world. But while that is happening, somebody inside me is giving life to my body so I can live out the full course of my life and do what God has called me to do. So you can live out the full course of your life and do what God's called you to do. Amen? So you affirm that. the Holy, See, the Holy Spirit in you is not sleeping inside you. He's giving life. He's doing something to our mortal bodies. He's giving life. Do you speak life into every cell of your body? The Holy Spirit in me is giving life to every cell in my body. The last reason, number five, worship team, please come. Why can we, the church, say that healing belongs to us? It's because of the commission the Lord Jesus gave to the church. He has commissioned the church to minister healing, to minister deliverance. We understand that God is Jehovah Rapha. God is our healer. He's redeemed us. And we understand there is sin and there is sickness in this world. We also understand that in some cases, there are spirits that cause infirmities and spirits that trouble our physical bodies. And there are demonic powers that trouble our minds, causing fear and confusion and depression and oppression, all those things. We know we're living in a fallen world. But in that fallen world, Jesus has authorized us. Jesus has empowered us to do the works he did. He said, John 14, 12 to 14, the works that I do, you will do. And greater works because I go to the Father. He went to the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit. And then he continued. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. So he says, you're authorized to use my name. Empowered by the Spirit, authorized by the name. That's the church. Amen. And talking about you and me, he said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we got to believe that, Lord. And we lay hands on the sick. We are expecting you, Lord, to heal them, make them well. And he said this for all believers. All believers. Every believer is empowered by the Holy Spirit and authorized by the name of Jesus to lay hands, to drive out demons, to heal the sick. And to the church, in closing, James 5, 14 and 15, James says, Is anyone sick among you? Anyone? No qualifier, anyone sick among you. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray over him. Let him anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord and pray and the, over him in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if, if he has committed any sins, he shall be forgiven. So this is the commission to the church. Do this. Amen. To all of us today must believe his word healing belongs to you let's say this together healing belongs to me i'm a child of god i'm in covenant with god healing belongs to me so let there be no shadow of doubt yes i understand in this world we will face sickness there is sickness all around us and sin all around us we will face it but healing belongs to us. Quickly review. Why do we say healing belongs to us? Number one, because our God is the Father of all mercies. Second, we say healing belongs to us because 
of God's covenant with us. Third, because of Christ's finished work on the cross. Fourth, we say healing belongs to us because it's our redemption blessing. And fifth, because the church is commissioned to heal, to minister healing, minister deliverance. So it's ours. It's for all of us. So what we want to do today, and I want to just say one more thing. We're not against doctors. We're not against the hospital, the medical practitioners. We should look at them as complementary, not opposite or competing with us, contradictory. Doctors, hospitals, they're complementary. It's just us using the knowledge, the wisdom that God has given us to reach the same goal, the same result, which is to be healthy physically, mentally, emotionally. So we are not against doctors. In Bible times, they didn't have what we have today. God has given it to us today. So let's use it. Are you listening? Yes or no? So we thank God for what's available to us through medical science. We use it. We see it as complementary. We are all we are both working towards the same goal, which is to get people well. So while we can and we should use medical help, also have faith in God. I understand. Also have faith in God. Believe that God is your healer. He will work through the help of the uh, medical professionals. He'll work through them. He'll work through your prayer. He'll work in response to your prayer. He'll work through the prayers that other people will pray with you and for you. So it all works together. We're all working towards the same thing. For people to be well, to be whole physically, and emotionally. So we are not contradictory to each other. We are complementary to each other. We're making the same journey. Amen. So today, right here, what we're going to do, we're going to pray. There are many ways that God would heal. We're not going to try to force the hand of God. We're just going to pray. There are people, those of you watching online, the Lord is with you. There is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. We pray from here. And if there's the people here in this auditorium, you pray. Those of you watching online, you pray where you are. God is faithful to His Word. He is watching over His Word to perform it. And all we do is look to him and say, God, have mercy on me. God, I want you to touch me in your goodness and your mercy. And whatever your condition is, it's, it's between you and God, right where you are. You pray and say, Lord, I believe healing is for me. Touch me, Lord. Let that covenant that you that I have with you become effective in my life because you said I am the Lord your healer I receive the provision of Calvary's cross I receive my redemption blessing the quickening of my mortal body by the Holy Spirit I receive And then you pray specifically whatever your condition is. We are going to pray. You pray. I will pray from here. You pray right where you are. And let the Lord touch you. He is there with you. There are many ways to pray. We can lay hands and pray. We can anoint with oil and pray. But right now we are doing just a simple thing. We are just asking you to pray from where you are in faith.
calling on his mercy, calling on his goodness, responding to the words that we heard this morning. You pray. And if you need healing in your body, in your mind, you invite the Lord to touch and heal you. Heavenly Father, we have heard your word, your truth. And we receive your word. We receive your truth, Lord. And Father, for those in this auditorium, for those watching online, maybe they are at home or anywhere. For those of us who need healing in our bodies and in our minds, or maybe we are lifting up a family member. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray that healing will take place. That every sickness and disease be taken out of our bodies according to your word because you said, I will take sickness away from your midst. You said, I am the Lord who heals you. So be that, Lord, to those needing healing. Those whose names are being lifted up, wherever they may be. To those watching online, wherever they are watching. Holy Spirit, touch and heal. Even here in this place. Give life to every cell in our bodies. Give life to bones that may have been broken or damaged. Give life to nerves that may have been damaged. Give life to tissues that may have been damaged. And Lord, touch organs that are malfunctioning. Touch organs that have become diseased and make them whole, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing right here in this place. And we take authority over every spirit that's causing sickness and disease. Every spirit of pain. Every spirit that's causing chronic conditions. Every spirit that is tormenting the body or the mind with fear and confusion. Every spirit that is causing any form of distress. We command you in the name of Jesus to leave. Lord, let there be healing and wholeness coming in. And let injuries be healed, God. Problems caused by injuries be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, touch internal organs and make them whole. Touch blood conditions, make them whole. Let people receive their healing because we are your covenant people. We are sitting under your covenant, God. God, your word says that the Holy Spirit gives life to, to our bodies. Let life come in, God, even to eyes. The ears where hearing may be impaired. To nerves that may have been damaged, let the Holy Spirit give life. Let there be supernatural regeneration of those nerves. And Lord, go down even to the DNA and heal genetic disorders. Heal, Lord, within the cell. Touch the DNA. Let problems that are genetic, let there be a supernatural healing because you are creator God. Let there be healing. Chemical imbalances. Let things be brought to normal, Lord. And stay at normal. In the name of Jesus. Diabetic conditions, let there be complete healing, God. 
What is impossible with man is possible with God because you are our healer. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. As we continue to worship, I'm going to, in a minute or so, I'll, I'll, I'll request all of us to stand and we will worship, worship God. A couple of things. We are not against the doctors. Oh, let's just rise. Those of you we can just rise. We're not against doctors. So, there may be conditions that you are praying for. Go to the doctor, get checked. There's no problem. Absolutely. Let the doctors verify your healing. Let them attest to your healing. Go get it checked. But as we worship right now, if something has happened to you that you can verify, then I want to invite you to come forward to give a testimony. Right? There's no pressure to do this. We're not here for a show. But if something has happened to you while during this time of prayer, during this time of worship, and you can verify it, then I want you to take the liberty. I want you to take the opportunity to come forward. There's a mic right here. And just share briefly what the Lord has done. Is it okay? Right? We want to hear, we want to see, we want to celebrate, we want to glorify Jesus. This is not a show. This is not something we're doing to make somebody feel important, but this is here to glorify Jesus. So if something has happened to you right here this morning, while during worship, during the word, during the prayer time, a healing has taken place, then you can verify that I want to encourage you to come and testify. When you go home, you go to the doctor, you get checked, then make sure you testify. Send an email. Say, this is what the Lord did. And that's another way that you can share your testimony. Amen? So, we're going to take a few moments to worship. As we do that, if the Lord has done something, and you can verify, feel free to come. Feel free to come and share your testimony. Let's take, let's just worship Jesus.
working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it to working even when i don't feel it to working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it to working even when i don't feel it to working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when something for you right now and you want to testify I'm just go, going to give us a minute maybe it's like your final call <laughs> anyone you want to come forward give a testimony anyone here just wave your hand I'll wait for you something happened to you right now right here and you want to come up come up and testify just feel free to do that anyone okay I don't see you have you want to testify come on up moment anyone else you want to something happened to you right here right now and you want to just take a moment to just tell us what was the problem and what happens hey go ahead yeah, yeah go ahead. look look front and tell yeah. what was your problem and what happens Hello church, uh, I'm Shirley Susan. So I had a fracture in my left leg, like ankle fracture, uh, one month ago. And I was at bed rest. Uh, I couldn't even walk or like, uh, it was very difficult for me, like from past one month. So I was at, I couldn't go to college or something. And um, so first from one week, like, uh, I had this bandage and I, I came to college just last uh, uh, just one day ago. I thought to come to church today. So I had this pain. Still I have the pain and I couldn't walk so easily. But I was praying so hard. I wanted Jesus to heal me today. And now I can walk so easily. And I was, uh, when I was coming, it was I didn't have that pain. I, I'm so happy and I Amen. thank God for this miracle to happen. Amen. Yeah, I'm so happy for today. Thank you, Sher Cheryl. Shirley. Shirley, thank you, Shirley, for coming saying praise God for that. She had an accident, she had an injury. She says she can walk without pain. Thanks, Sharon. Anyone else? Praise God for that. Praise God. Anyone? Thanks for coming up. Anyone else? Something happened to you right now and you just want to testify. No pressure. Thank God for brave Shirley. <laughs> Shirley. Anyone else? You want to testify? Okay. All right. We're going to get ready to close. Now, I want to just give us an invitation. There could be people here. You've come. Maybe a friend invited you to come. And you're here this morning. The greatest miracle that can happen to you 
is the salvation of your soul. We all need a savior. And Jesus said this, he said, what will it benefit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? What will it profit? Because our life on earth is very short. Maybe a hundred or less, <laughs> who knows. A life on earth is short, but there's an eternity. You are an eternal being. There's an eternity that we are going to spend either with God in heaven and all that he's planned for us or we are going to be eternally separated from God in a place the Bible calls hell. And by the way, hell was not prepared for you. It was not made for you. It was not made for you. But without a savior without somebody who can save us from our sins that's where we all end up but thanks be to God the Bible says the wages of sin is death but the gift of God the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ God gives a gift a free gift for everyone and that's eternal life through Jesus Christ. And if you personally have never received that gift, then this is your moment. Those of you watching online, if there's anyone, this is your moment. If you are not sure that if you said, Lord, I receive your gift of eternal life that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. If you've never done that, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. It's entirely your choice to receive this gift or not. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, like we heard earlier, He died on the cross. He bore our sins. He was buried. He rose up again. And the Bible tells us whoever believes in Him receives forgiveness for their sins. So if you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, that you received eternal life through Jesus Christ, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. If you've never done this before in your life, you can join with me and just tell the Lord Jesus that you receive his gift. You receive forgiveness for your sins. You receive his gift of eternal life so that you can be with him eternally. Let's pray. If you've never done this before and this morning you want to do it, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. I receive your gift of eternal life. I believe in you. And I choose to follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If there's anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We want to celebrate with you. The Bible says there is great rejoicing in heaven or one person or one person who comes into the kingdom. And we want to rejoice here or not. Anybody, you prayed with me for the very first time this morning. I want to see your hand. Could you please raise your hand? Anyone here? You prayed with me for the very first time. I want to just see your hand. I see one hand up there. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? You prayed with me for the very first time. Anyone else? Just wave your hand so that our readers will come to you and give you a pack. Is there another hand up there? Anyone else? Or right behind, right here. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? I want to see your hand. Our readers should come to you. We'll come to you, give you a bag and a packet that has some resources to help you get started in your journey of faith. There's also a card where you can write your name and number and hand it back to them so that somebody from the church office will call you, will guide you on how to use the resources in, your, in that bag. And you've begun the most exciting journey of your life to follow Jesus Christ. That's the greatest thing. Amen? We're going to get ready to close. We will pray, we will dismiss. 
I want to invite all our pastors and life group leaders, if you can make yourself available right here in front so that we can lay hands on people and pray. Those who need prayer, uh, after we dismiss, you can always come up to any one of us and we can pray with you. Uh, any of your needs, physical, emotional, whatever, we're here to serve you. So please feel free to come to any one of us uh, for prayer. So pastors, life group leaders, as soon as we dismiss, please be here. Uh, just pray with the people. Let's close, please. Father, thank you for this time. Let the word produce in our lives. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.